our today's topic is a data driven discoveries unveiling the power of ai and informatics for explore, exploring the landscape of knowledge i am mohammed umar and uh, here is the brief overview of our uh, today's lecture and first i will start with who am i and i next i will discuss objective and outcomes of the lecture brief introduction to informatics and its related fields and the most important thing is why we need to learn ai genetic generative ai and llm we means the computation persons and the social scientists and everyone why we need ai so my main focus was will be to emphasize the importance of learning ai for everyone and i will discuss also there that why social trans scientists also need to learn ai for their for their research work as well next i will briefly introduce uh, basic topics of ai and its related fields because if we are going to learn genetic ai and we are going to apply genetic ai in our work without knowing technical details as we know that social scientists may may not like to work on technicalities but still we need to learn how to use genetic ai for our task and why i will discuss so for that i will also introduce uh, basics of ai as well next i will shortly discuss some of our previous published articles i published with dr park and then the current work we are going, working on related with informatics actually as you know that my field is computer science data science so data science and ai and machine learning so i will i will only share here those research topics which are also related with informatics in this lesson other i will skip the other research topics i will i work here i will skip those topics so here is my introduction by i am assistant professor at the department of computer science and my university name is islamia university bahawalpur and my city name is bahawalpur i got phd from information and communication engineering department yangnam university south korea in 2017 my thesis title was topic coherence evaluation a machine learning perspective and uh, almost all of us know that uh, know about topic modeling my research topic my research thesis was on evaluation of topic models and my res phd research domain belongs to ai more specifically it relates with nlp and text mining and i i do actually i propose some type of embedding to represent topic models and and applied different machine learning algorithms to explore or justify my embeddings were good or not so prior to my phd i have double masters and i actually i can say i am privileged to have msc in mathematics as well so i'm msc in mathematics from islamabad university bahawalpur where i'm also teaching now and i am msc in computer science from another Uh, university that belongs to capital of capital of my my pro province it's lahore from lahore uit lahore so i have two mscs that is msc mathematics and msc computer science so in msc computer science my research thesis was based on image processing so actually my research varies i have different exposure of research ex research work in the start back in 2005 2008 i was working on mostly i was working on image processing and image analysis and my go to my prior prior problem, say the tool i was i was preferring at that time it was matlab and then since 2009 to 12 i tried to learn machine learning and related stuffs and it was actually self taught at that time and most of the time i learned from some well known books and online courses from coursera adex udacity datacam etc 
since 2013 onwards, my research work belongs to, to, to the domain natural language processing and text mining. My PhD also belongs to this field. So my PhD started, I got, I started PhD in 2013. In, in about 2016, I luckily met with Professor Park and then got introduced with Scientometrics, bibliometrics, informatics, and webometrics. We work on a on a paper, and actually, my my friend was actually his student, and he told me about Professor Park, and he and he actually he praised in in a manner that I I myself visited him visited him and I requested him that I allow him allow me to work with him, and he was nice and he was most generous enough that he allowed me to work with him and I, I learned a lot. Actually, whatever I know in scientometrics, I, I learned from Professor Park. Moving on from here, uh, just a little bit introduction of my uh, research students. Just uh, actually recently, one of my PhD students got uh, graduated. So uh, I have one PhD student on, I'm on my credit right now, currently, and 12 MS students, master students are already got thesis from my side since 2017, after joining my uh, university back after completing the PhD from Korea. I, currently, five PhD scholars are working with me, and uh, 10 master students, graduate students are also working with me. So, and in, ad in addition to others, some undergraduates are also working with me. So my major responsibilities here at in my universities are coursework. I, and uh, four courses I have to teach as a part, uh, as my workload. And then in addition to that, I also supervise undergraduate students graduate students and postgraduate students. I mostly work in the domain of data analysis and modeling. I, if, one, if we say, if one say that who you want to be called, I, I, will, I will say that call me a data scientist. I'm open to work on any kind of data, whether it is URLs, text, image, images, audio, videos. So I'm not, I don't belong to a specific domain that 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 I can I say that I only work on a particular type of data. So here is my field: data analysis and modeling. Most recently, actually, since four months or about six months, I I'm learning large language model and generative AI through different online courses offered by Deep Learning AI. And actually, in my opinion, generative learning generative model is is very much important and i actually i i believe that and it's my statement one can argue about on it maybe disagree in my opinion that applications like chat gpt bard are modern day calculator and everybody needs need to know how to use these calculators these modern day calculators and but the students need to know also need also to know that when to use these calculators and when not to use these calculators. And I also work on different applications of AI and uh, ML and data science in educational data mining. As I told you that I'm open to work on various types of data. By this, I'm currently working on ed educational data mining I'm not, I will not share my research related work here because we are not related, uh, it's not related with informatics at the, right now. So I'm also working in cytometrics, bibliometrics, sports data analysis. I will not introduce this and my medical domain as well. I will also not in introduce this. Okay. So objective and outcomes of the today's lecture. So I will start with the uh, that we will get familiar with scientometrics and AI. That is, this is ob objective of this today's lecture that we get familiar familiar with scientometrics and AI and how they are they can how how both of these domains can 
support each other and how AI can be applied in scientometrics or informatics. To realize why we need, and my major in objective is to realize all of us that why we need to learn AI, generative AI and LMS. So I will also discuss different basics of AI and its subfields. Then I will discuss various use cases of AI in informatics related research. And it also related with my current research work that, that I collaborate with Professor Park. Okay, just I will start with informatics. Actually, I I need to admit that it's not my go to field in, in the sense that I also work in other fields. So, but I like to work in this field and be, because it's also involved in data. So informatics quantify the world of knowledge. These two pictures I taken from Wikipedia and it's these are good pictures I will I'll I will discuss. So what is informatics? Informatics is quantitative analysis to measure, analyze, and visualize the creation, dissemination, and consumption of research information. Consumption of research information. It's not just a, about crunching numbers. It uses data. It uses data to explore knowledge creation and sharing. And that's why I'm also attracted toward this domain. And actually it's very challenging and rewarding and very interesting as well. Informatics, when we apply AI data analysis on info in, in the field of informatics. So it uses data to explore knowledge creation and sharing. Whereas there are various diverse subfields of informatics, bibliometrics, cybermetrics, webometrics, scientometrics, altmetrics, and some other quantitative science studies, these are overlapping fields. And if we see the subjects structure of informatics, actually this is the uh, network prepared through SiteSpace. We all know about SiteSpace. And this picture is showing major terms related with this domain informatics. If we see some clusters, say cluster one showing network, edge index, web, cluster two, two is saying science, information, bibliometrics, citation, impact. Similarly, if we see bibliometrics, scientometrics, informatics, journal, edge index. So lots of keywords are looking here and it, it's also briefly introduced what is informatics. Let's see. Now I'm focusing one of the popular field of informatics, it is bibliometrics. Bibliometrics focus on citations and publications as key indicators of research impact. Metrics like impact factor and, and, and H index fall under this umbrella. Applications of bibliometrics are general ranking. We also worked recently, got published an article in general ranking, I will discuss with you. Author profiling, I also work on this, but from, from the perspective of text mining. Research evaluation, identifying impact, impactful research areas. These are the some main ap applications of bibliometrics. Actually, we need to, we, we should realize that bibliometrics and scientometrics are, and other metrics are also overlapping fields. Some topics also share with each other. So what is scientometrics? Scientometrics expands beyond citations, which are usually discussed in uh, bibliometrics. It can be to encompass the network of researchers like collaboration networks, co-authorship networks, institutionals, and collaboration of scientific fields, applications. It maps scientific landscapes, useful for analysis of knowledge flows, identify potential, potential collaborations between authors, institutes, countries, even research ideas, predicting future research trends. It's useful for predicting future research trends, analyzing co-authorship patterns and emerging research communities. 
one thing I want to share with all of you that in I just got to know about Scientometrics in 2016. Why I'm telling you this? This important field is actually hidden from most of these science-related persons. You may be amazed about this. Actually, and, and after seeing this field, scientometrics and related fields, I came to know that how much these are valuable for literature review. Whenever, whether we are working on, say, scientometrics or bibliometric fields or not, whether we are working on some other research fields, say, be poorly related to computer science. But in my opinion, after working on several years and seeing the lack of knowledge of computer-related persons and actually other all uh, science-related science persons, actually, they don't know about the importance of scientometrics and they don't know about various data sources like dimensions, how the that website is useful for uh, quick analysis of top persons, top cited articles of a particular domain. So it's very important field, but most of the science science related persons don't don't know about it. So web of metrics, actually this was the first topic or field I work with Professor Park and I analyze URLs, URLs using this field. So uh, what is web of metrics? Explores the online dimension of research information, analyzing website traffic, social media mentions, and downloads to understand online research and engagement. The applications of web metrics are monitoring online scholarly discussions, identifying trending topics, evaluating the impact of open access in initiatives. Actually here, text mining also very useful to apply. NLP, sentiment analysis, and with the combination of web metrics and other uh, say data analysis techniques are very valuable here. Webometrics also overlaps with cyber metrics. So another field, it's very getting popular. It's alt, alt metrics. It provides another dimension. It captures alternative metrics beyond traditional citations. Actually, in traditional citations, a research article is cited by some other research article. A book is cited by some other book say referred by another book or some other research articles but here here what is citing who is citing news mentioning our research article media coverage about some research some online discuss discussions those can be scientists or those can be some general public so alt metrics complements other informations may be covered by Web of metrics or cyber metrics. It provides a picture of research impact beyond academia. I, as I already discussed that, it also covers, uh, so in academia, it covers research articles, books, and in art metrics, we are, we are covering social mentions, social media mentions of, say, research articles. The applications of art metrics are identifying research with societal impact. So society, how society is thinking about some particular research. They will post some on for Facebook, TikTok, etc. Tra tracking public engagement with the science. It's very useful. Measuring the influence of non-traditional research outputs. So it's so in this sense it it, it complements and it's very very fruitful and valuable actually. So in informatics beyond not just we talk about metrics, that is the, the domains ending ending with metrics like bibliometrics, scientometrics. So we also work on various types of knowledge flows through various types of technique technologies or techniques. We visualize and analyze relationship between research topics, publication and research, co-citation analysis, topic modeling. It, also, it belongs to AI field or text mining. So applications of knowledge mapping and Mapping and knowledge flow is related with identifying intellectual connections between research areas, predicting future research directions, exploring cross-disciplinary collaborations. So another 
dimensions of info informatics at we just don't discuss metrics here as already discussed in previous slides we also cover in informatics patent analysis analyzing patent applications grants and citations clinical trial metrics so so clinical trial metrics analyze data from clinical trials to understand the effect effectiveness and safety of new drugs or treatments use metrics like success rates of some drug patient recruitment and public publication frequency actually from here i uh, i want your attention that that why i will emphasize that we need to learn large language models why i will discuss in detail later but if we see that social scientists or computer scientists don't know about the that particular domain that is we don't know about medical domain we need to consult with some expert we don't know about psychologist and their related terminologies but but we are analyzing data and if we are analyzing data related with some other field that's the challenge for social social science scientists and also for the computer scientists as well because in computer science we don't have any boundary and you guys of social scientists also analyzing different types of literature sometimes you're analyzing say literature related with blockchain ai in say advertisement and and application of say and we are and we are covering literature related with say medical domain so but we don't know about the domain so what we will do if we don't know about the domain here we will need experts or at least we need a robot that is chat gpt or bard i will discuss with, with you later with with some concrete examples research fi funding analysis so informatics also is useful for research funding analysis in it in, to investigate patterns pattern in research funding allocation across different disciplines institutions countries it helps identifying funding priorities assess the impact of funding strategies of a country of a of an institute and in, in, inform future research in, investments so but we need to realize that we need data most of the databases don't provide this kind of information but there are some venues for example dimensions website we know about that i will introduce dimension website with you as well because of its implications and applications in our research research work and its importance and its limitations i will also share with that, you that and also we'll we'll put some future research work we need to proceed on dimensions or google scholar so we also perform network analysis different types of network analysis using informatics and informatics also rely on text mining and topic modeling as you know that this is this uh, this work is also related with my phd and so informatics also depends and you, depending on the use case we may need to use text mining and topic modeling i will discuss something a little bit about with an example what is topic modeling and why we need to learn llms for topic modeling or topics analysis so informatics also discuss research productivity and performance metrics scholarly communication practices field of informatics is constantly evolving as new data sources and analytical techniques emerge that is we need to realize that informatics is not bound it, it is not just bound to some particular metrics it's not bound to just some specific kind of techno technology or techniques it is not just collaboration network analysis or citation network analysis it it is it also it 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 involves various types of data and we need to analyze data sometimes data belongs to social media that is social media is mentioning some research article some research word 
some key topic, research topic. So different kinds of venues. And this, most recently, we were also talking about to analyze, say, we, were, we want to talk, analyze video in our social uh, uh, project. And the, so it was related with climate change. So inform, we have different kinds of data and we need to know different kinds of skills to analyze the data. And not just not to up technical skills, we also need to know some domain knowledge. And that's where we all will lack because domain is not ours. That is, we are, we are working in, we may be working on climate change. We may be working on some medical related, say come some cancer, some type of cancer, but those are not our domain. So what we will do in that situation, I will discuss with you. So why we need to learn to use AI and LLMs? In, in my opinion, this is the most important point of my research, uh, my today's lecture. Why we need to learn to use AI and large language models. Our work, our work, that is computer scientists, social scientists, psychologists, etc. Our work relates with exploring the information, literature related with big data, generative AI in say advertisements. We are maybe covering medical related literature, but we lack in domain knowledge, medical domain knowledge big data related knowledge, blockchain related knowledge. We need expert opinions in results, interpretation and discussions. Actually, if I recall, if I realize that where I feel lack when I apply some say networks, say collaboration network or some keyword networks, whenever I try to interpret the results, Actually, just we don't just display the tables and figures or of some particular network. We need to discuss the result. And we need to, if we don't know about the domain, it's not possible to discuss the results. So we need ex expert opinion. So here comes the power of collaboration and here also we will identify that where we can use generative AI and large language models. For example, let's discuss with an example why I'm emphasizing that we need to learn AI and LLMS, LM, large language models. For example, when we apply topic modeling, we get topics and we need Topic labeling. What is topic labeling? I will talk about it next next slide. We need to learn or we need to apply topic labeling and interpretation of medical related topics. Say, for example, inter interpretation of medical related topics. Then we may be we also form say word clouds. So what what is the message in those topics on those word clouds? Unigram, bigram, trigram, related word grams. Where is the, how we will narrate the story? The most important thing is storytelling. If we don't know the domain knowledge, how we will narrate the story in our discussion section of our manuscript or research article? How we will inter, inter, interpret various kinds of network if we don't know about or if we don't have no domain knowledge. For example, please note that our heading still is why we need to learn to use large language models or generative AI. One example is, say, we have some word clouds. Actually, this is the article about three years ago, I worked with my MSc research student. He submitted his, uh, she, she submitted her PhD thesis. But still, I 
I'm not able to submit that article into a research journal and why? Because I feel that I lack domain knowledge and due to some discussion, some pending discussion, I did not submit that article. For example, and that's why I'm telling you that it's very important to get to know domain knowledge. And if we don't know domain knowledge, how we will use LLMs. So at that time, large language mod models were not there. And I was dependent, dependent, I was thinking to consult with some doctor that knows about cancer because I was, we investigated top four journals of cancer. And this, and this screenshot is showing, this screenshot is showing, say row, row one is showing that word cloud of, word cloud of top most say journal of oncology. Oncology means cancer. And the second row shows the word clause related with second top most journal of oncology or cancer. And third row is related with third most top journal of oncology. So if we see that, if we see, we can see that we on top left, we can see that we have cancer, patient, evidence, treatment, approach. If we see, if we read this in second row, the word cloud here, figure C, therapy, protein, gene, factor. So the protein, gene, mutation, these are actually, these are the terms related with the domain. If I can't understand these top keywords, top weighted keywords, I will not be able to narrate the story from here. That is, I will not be able to discuss here, discuss what is, what is going on in this word cloud. Okay. So another thing is that, another example is that why we need to learn to use large language models. For example, on the same type data set, I also applied Actually, we also applied topics, topic modeling and get 15 topics from our collection of four abstract. I applied topic modeling on abstracts of four journals and the span of research articles were about, about 10 years. If we see the first column, these are the top 10 words of our topic, say topic one, the, has top 10 words are cancer, death, death rate, incidence, men, women, cause, America, United States, rate. These are some popular key keywords and everybody understand this. But if we read topic two, cancer, pain, agent. So if I, what what is agent? Without context and without domain knowledge, we can't discuss this or we can't think about that. Actually, domain knowledge is related with cancer. So agent, treatment, molecular, tumor, cell, including patient therapy. Actually, these this word is not just, see, this is not a spy agent. Actually, this, this is the agent related with some, some medicine or some enzyme without context or without domain knowledge it's not possible to up to make labels of these topics actually output of topic modeling is the collection of topics say in first column we are seeing topics now i want to interpret these topics for my research thesis and why i did not submit my research article though it is it's passed already 3 years for that. Why? Because I'm not satisfied with the these labels. Though these labels are from a system biologist that is a person who belongs to biology, but still I feel that it lacks the labeling and also the article lacks with the relate, related discussions. Why I'm saying that I will, we will need to learn LLMS, LLMs 
I will shortly discuss with you. For example, large language models have the capability to provide these labels if if we choose some some specialized if we choose some specialized language model. As we know that some language models say we know that ChatGPT is a language model. It's a transformer. And we also know that BARD is another language model. These are proprietary language models. There are also open source language models, but these are general language models. They may not work on some particular kind of medical domain, or they may it may have some limited knowledge on cancer related work. So we can apply or we can search for a language model. It is already trained. The good news is that it is already tra trained. It's like an expert. For example, for our collaboration, we sometimes hire a person, a psychologist. We consult with a psychologist or consult with a cancer related doctor. So in that case, I was searching for a doctor in my case that I want to discuss with him that what it means what it the word the message lies in this in this in this topic a system biologist provide me his interpretation here but if i had chat gpt at that time what i what i will do that with that i can put these top 10 words of topics into chat gpt or bard and can ask the bot to provide me the label of this topic. It's not of, it, actually these labels are not output of the topic modeling. These are manually assigned by a person, by a subdomain expert. So if, as we know that chat GPT know lots of things. So in its original form, if a language model lacks in its interpretation, we can also fine tune that language model and also get more better results from that as well. So what I'm trying to say that this is another picture prepared from SiteSpace. And this picture is also from same article, which I didn't submit it. And the, the same reason is that it's, it's not possible for me to interpret the story here. So I can say that that top keywords in 2013 were these and 2016 were these. And I can also say them some clusters, but the actual discussion can be done by some expert. And that expert can be a woman and that and that it can be a it can be a bot. Actually, bot is making our life easy now. Actually, why? If we know something, say, if I want to train our length, a uh, machine learning model from scratch, I need some large data set. I need to prepare the data set. I need to get some labels. And so somehow I need to train that uh, model for my work. For that, I need some technicalities. I need to know some Python, some framework, say PyTorch, deep learning framework. And I also need powerful machines because if we, I need big data or large data, but in case of, if we have chat GPT, it is all, it's, it's a monster. I also say that it's a monster because he or she, or it knows everything. And if that monster don't know something, I can teach with my smaller data set that it, it is called fine tuning. So it can aid us. So I'm emphasizing that I am concluding my hair that large language models will assist us. Large language models will assist us in interpreting the results. So we need to realize that the computer scientist and social scientist must know how to harness this joint that is chat GPT or BARD or other some open source language model. From moving on here, if we realize that the importance of 
large language model so if we agree then then we maybe agree that we know something about ai the basics of basics of language models and some some theory related to the language models and the ai field so uh, we know i know that we are here most of the persons are from uh, social scientists and i'm also talking to social scientists so this this material is for all and don't think about that and be confident that whatever i am discuss discussing it's it's for you it's i'm it's not for some technical persons we can we all of us can understand this so be motivated here what is ai artificial intelligence ai is the ability of machines to exhibit intelligent behavior learning that behavior can be learning reasoning problem solving and decision making in 2024 the current trends of ai are we want these days we want human like intelligence actually in 1950s we also like to have human like intelligence but at that time it this expectation actually because of this expectation from ai we we had winter as you are observing winter in korea and everybody may be hiding from winter so due to this high expectation at that time we see lots of winter and summer of ai the winter season is when ai research start stopped funding stopped summer when everything flourish it's but due to computational resources and some techn techniques we in these days we have at that time it was it was not providing us human like intelligence but now in today we are seeing human like intelligence through chat gpt and we are actually want the computers that that home computers work may not replace humans actually but we want human like intelligence for home computers now and we are seeing that these are approaching so current trends also include understanding natural language we are seeing chat gpt related they are and they understand natural language and also counter argument with us they have some limitations still adopting to new situations as humans do like if we know about some intelligent games those those interact with us learn from us in in the start those intelligent games say computer games maybe maybe beaten by us by by humans but they learn from their mistakes as humans do and whenever we, if we play much with the those intelligent games they learn from their mistakes and then and ultimately they can beat us so the current trend is adoptive models chat gpt is not ad adoptive it's static but through some techniques we can make it adoptive interacting with physical world but chat gpt is also interacting with the physical world so ai what is ai ai is a set of tools it's a domain actually back in 1950s 1956 actually even in in uh, early 2000 ai was not term with or synonym with machine learning but these days but these days if we are saying that we are talking about ai actually we are talking about machine learning but in all or say maybe 15 years ago or 20 years ago it was not just machine learning it was it, it was expert system and other some other things but these days if we are talking about ai actually we are talking about machine learning and its types for example different types of machine learning supervised machine learning and supervised machine learning reinforcement learning generative ai and this slide is taken from deep learning ai they allowed us that we can use their pictures through the it, their license allowed us and actually they allowed that, us that they, we can use in our research uh, say uh, and uh, ad academic purpose and revenge actually is the most pro prominent persons and according to their data and this figure says that the most popular 
type of AI is or supervised machine is AI is supervised machine learning. The size of this block is saying that applications of supervised machine learning are more. But as we know that generative AI is new as compared to unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. But we we are seeing that it's it's also have lots of applications and this this circle will grow more and more. We know that. So these are main uh, uh, domains of AI, supervised learning. Actually, these are all machine learning, reinforcement learning and unsupervised learning and generative AI. Generative AI, let's move forward. So now I want to talk about some basic terminologies. Why I'm talking about these term terminologies, as I already to discuss that, uh, uh, we are we are realize that we need to know about generative AI because they will benefit us. And sometimes we also may need to further fine tune our generative model if it is not working. For that purpose, we also need to know some basics of AI. So what is data set? What is what are the labels? Let's talk about it. For example, I we are seeing what is machine learning. I will discuss machine learning. This is machine learning is the subfield of AI. And, and these days, actually, it can say that it is synonym to AI. In machine learning, we have various algorithms which learn from data without explicit programming. This is important word, explicit programming. And because of this, machine learning is easy as compared to normal programming. Because in programming, we need to know coding. And the good news is, even if we want to build some application, AI application from our hand, using some codes as well, using some language, say Python, we don't know, don't, we may not need to know the genuine, we may not be a genuine programmer. We just need to know some basics of programming and basic concepts of AI. So even social uh, social scientists can can build a machine learning model from scratch as well. Genetic AI allow us to use that model. We can make some machine learning model like say ChatGPT. Though ChatGPT is difficult or actually for almost impossible for us, in the sense that we need lots of computation power to make that kind of joint monster algorithms machine learning algorithms various different types of algorithms learn from data without explicit programming i will like explain this in detail so what is what kind of data we have we may have structured data a structured data is table form data for example if we want to predict house price if we want to predict house price what we know, what we need to collect, or how we will train our machine learning model, we need a data set. So we need to prepare that it's the shape of the data set is that this. For example, if we want to predict house price, we will collect data of houses which are already sold, or we know the prices of those houses earlier. And in future, we will predict some new price of some new house. For example, we know that house price is dependent on house area. And house price may be dependent on number of bedrooms in it. And maybe other features as well. Actually, lots of other features as well. For simplicity, let's consider these two features or those two factors. So these can be called independent features, independent variables. Say house area and number of bedrooms. And the third column is price of a house so first row is showing that first row is showing that it's showing a house with 523 square feet area one bedroom and hundred thousand dollar its price hundred thousand dollar is its price another house area is 645 square feet number of bedrooms one and its price is $150,000. So 
if we prepare carefully prepare this kind of data set and that's it and that's it actually so if we say some algorithm if we use some algorithm and we can think that what what is algorithm we can say that algorithm is like a, a brain a human brain for example if i say a human person that say please remember if a if a house area is 523 and number of bedroom is one its price is 100 thousand dollar even if that person don't know how his or her brain remember that but somehow he learns this pattern this is the input the features and this is the output it is called label as well the price label so algorithms are like brains and we know that every human has different brains and some persons learn quickly some person then maybe late some remember more so similarly different type kinds of algorithms have some limitations and advantages and disadvantages as compared to different humans another kind of data is this kind of data here the data is images this image type of data is unstructured data for example voice video image or unstructured data again here we have input and output label here the label output is label for example label is whether the object is cat or not cat cat or not cat these are the label in this case in previous data set the label was the price is house it was the house price here nature of the label was quantitative numeric form and here the nature of the label is qualitative or categorical so if we have categorical type of label in our data set it is it is classification related machine learning problem and we have categorical uh, say quantitative type of variable it is regression related supervised machine learning problem why i'm saying supervised because we know the output we know the category so if we know the house price it is supervised if we know the name of or category of this object it is supervised for example if i we are learning capital abc i know that that object is a so if we know if our data set has label associated with it it is called label data set and so and what kind of learning we are doing what kind of machine learning is this it is supervised machine learning related data which has input and output moving forward here if we know about the data set so why i'm emphasizing this even if in the future we may not build some machine learning model from scratch but if we will be using generative ai model in our work for our research discussion and analysis we may need to prepare this kind of data set to fine tune to further fine tune our generative model if we may not may may not be getting good results from that and that's it we need not to work, think about or maybe got puzzled that we don't know about programming so moving on from here acquiring data we manually how we label the data actually label is very important because because of the label if price is correct our algo will work correctly so if if labels are incorrect so our algo will also learn incorrectly because these are the answers of the questions so if input is the question the label is the actually answer so how we actually in our data set labels can be manual that is we can see our object human and assign it is cat it is not cat and the label can be observations or behavior of a user depending on the use case for example if we are preparing this kind of data say a user purchase some online stuff or say visit visited some online website and and whether that person purchased or not which these 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 can be labels 
and what kind of application we build from this whether the a person a visiting person will purchase this item or not it can be used in say digital marketing another say machine temperature pressure whether the machine is at fault or not it can be observed and the labels can be downloaded from websites and partnerships but important thing is that our data set must have important features that the factors affecting the label label is the output so if we remember this thing just one more technical uh, uh, picture the, just uh, just be bear, bear with me and after this if if professor asks me i will uh, uh, we will have some break if 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 required so artificial intelligence, machine learning, algorithms learn from data without explicit programming. Explicit programming means, I will explain it. I just explained that data set. For supervised machine learning, what kind of data set we have? We have data. We have data and desired output. Please look at the bottom side here. In supervised machine learning, we have data. That is the features. And the desired output, this is label. And we, we ask some algo, it's like a brain to learn input and output. That is from how features learn its price. It's already in the data. We just need to call some algorithm. Just for example, we on if we are using calculator, we call sine function, cause function. And similarly that we, we need to say call some function, say machine learning algorithm, and and we need to ask that algorithm that learn input and output pattern. If it is done, the output will be a trained model. If it is done, the output will be a trained model. It is called training. It's called training. And for, for training, we, what we get, what kind of data set we used? We use this kind of data set. That is, this is data and this is label. Again, this is data and it's label. So for example, in image processing, this is data and it's associated are the labels. So if once we have that model, for example, chat GPT is a model, trained model. We can input some, in, add some, we can provide some input to this trained model like chat GPT and can get output. So if we see that we are, we are using chat GPT from this end, that is we provide some question, it provides some answer. But behind this, some this kind of stuff, but no doubt chat GPT involves some other techniques as well. But in simple form, this is the supervised learning that we in from input and output, we train our model. And again, I'm saying that it's just like a, a brain and, and different students have different brains. And we can say that we are training a student and we are asking a student that this is a question and it's answer. For example, if I'm a teacher, I know the question and I also know the answer. If I'm teaching a student that this is, please, this is a question and remember it's an answer. This is a question, it's an answer. It's a supervised learning. And if we, we are learning through computer, it is supervised machine learning. And the trained student or learned student is can say that it's a trained model. Then after training, how we evaluate a, a student, we can ask same question from the student, but, but we, I taught to that student. And I can also I'll ask some related question, maybe unseen question from the student, whether it, he generalizes or not. So this is the paradigm of machine learning. And actually it's simple. If what, why it's simple, we are just using algorithm here. And providing the data set. Important thing is preparation of the data set. In comparison to the traditional programming, in comparison to the traditional programming, which is actually difficult, traditional programming as compared to machine learning, why? In traditional programming, we write our program, actually we write our model, our algo here. We provide the data, we write our program, that is coding, and then apply in a, some, say it's a program, in the program, we have data and coding, that is the algorithm, and it provides output. But note that, what is the difference between traditional programming and machine learning? 
traditional programming in traditional programming we provide data and rules that is the program and get the output and what is difficult in traditional programming writing the program that is coding in contrast to the traditional programming in machine learning we also provide data that is similar to traditional programming but we provide result output uh, i hope you are getting what i am going to try, try to say that we provide data and its output and what it provides it provides rules algorithm code so this is the difficult part is doing by machine learning so that's why i'm saying that machine learning is easy for any person so in machine learning we are getting the rules out at the output in traditional programming we are actually writing the rules for example you can see from here in with particular example same picture actually this is for example some bank transactions and the rules and we and the algor learns that whether that transaction is fraudulent or not so if it's traditional programming we have to write rules ourselves we need to write different kind of rules or programming that this kind of transaction is fraudulent or not but in machine learning what we need to do we need to prepare a data set we need to put features that is time of the transaction that is the data set input features and we need to have a label whether that transaction is fraudulent or not and we will ask our algo that learn the rules here we are writing the rules in traditional programming and in machine learning we are learning the rules once rules are learned it is called trained model for example chat gpt is a trained model and we are using trained model that's the monster professor should we break yeah it depends on you i think you are you know pretty much slow so uh, you know, uh, you know yeah. if you want to take a break we could you no. know have i can go out five more but if you want to go on and you can continue yeah i can, i want to go on sir okay okay Maybe please just... go on yeah it's a very Maybe good explanation can... from the beginning you know it yeah. you provide you know general overview of the scientometrics informatics yeah and then coming into the you know machine learning compared to the yeah. you know traditional programming it's a very good education yeah thank you yeah okay just i quickly covered the technical part and i will come to the related research work we are doing here just some few basic information in ai we also use a word transfer learning or fine tuning in generative ai context just with the, try to understand with this example for example i try to learn or i build a machine learning model and using 100000 images and and what we learned that that model learns that it's a particular car different types of cars 100 types of images okay the task was the model was detecting the car that is for example through camera and the camera is telling that a, a, a car is ahead of us but in the original model in that data set we don't have this kind of cars that is cart but we already have trained model what to do either again training these 100000 and 100 images from scratch or what what we can apply transfer learning that is our model already know lots of know about lots of images what we need to add just we need to add some 100 images to that train model then also we need to some with some trick we need to ask that train model please also learn about these 100 images these 100 images are related with golf cart detection actually these these 100 images are related with golf cart now that algo already knows about 100000 images and we also provided just small data set that is 100 images that also learn so it is it, uh, it, the model is already intelligent so if we provide 100 images more then 
and we are also saying that just please run 100 more images. By using this technique, we need not to learn from scratch and from again. It is called transfer learning in deep learning. Deep learning is actually subfield of machine learning where we use different types of artificial neural network. And it is also called fine tuning in generative AI. I'm telling you, I'll share with that we can retrain our model, ChatGPT. So in deep learning, we can see a model like this. I will not go through technical details, just I will quickly pass through this image. So in deep learning, we use different types of artificial neural networks. Just to connect with the, our previous discussion, here in we are using some model. That model can be artificial neural network. For example, some deep learning neural network, different types of neural network we have. So we what we provide features and it will provide the our the answer, that is the price. But then we will compare whether the price is correct or not and we will again retrain our model. Moving forward, again, with the amount of data, small AI models, that is the models which were not complex, shallow neural networks or some other type of machine learning models, the performance was not getting high even with the big data. For example, big data get high in 2015, 16 onward. And, but with the large data size, we get high performance, but after some time, if model is not complex, if model is not complex, like if brain is not complex enough to remember more data or remember more information, that big data will not be useful. So for big data, what do we need? We need deep neural networks. We, we need large language, large models. For example, large language model or deep neural networks. So large language model is also a deep neural network. Different types of neural network we have, convolutional neural network for images, recurrent neural network, recurrent neural network for text data, you, this this is this is a typo LSTM actually RM it's not RM it's LSTM GANs transformer these are say chat GPT and BARD are actually types of transformers these are large AI models chat GPT and BARD they can can get benefit from big data actually because these are big brains big models they can learn from large big data so in language models we in the start, in language models were working like this. We have a sentence. We can predict that what com comes next. These were the traditional language models. Recently, what kind of language model we have, they can have the cap capability of question and answering. This is just technical details that how they, they are trained. They are training, trained like this. My favorite book is a bagel. This is the label. Again, my favorite food is a bagel with, with is a again its label so in the sentence it's a phrase and its next word is its label through this we trained the large language models using supervised machine learning there are different types of say machine learning algorithms say artificial neural, neural network a special type of and ask them that learn that what comes next from a phrase so artificial where there are other subfields of our ai say nlp and others things now here I'm talking about some published articles related with informatics. I published with Professor Park under the supervision of Professor Park. Most recent articles we got published from uh, a journal. It's related with general ranking. The title of this article is toward the consolidation of a multi-metric based, toward the consolidation of a multi-metric based general ranking and categorization system for computer science subject areas. This is general aim and it's a good journal. This is the name of my PhD student and this article is related with his PhD as well. This is another PhD student, another, the first one I already passed pass out. As we already know, this is Professor Anupa Park and it's me. So, this article relates with the general ranking and 
categorization. As we know that general ranking, some well-known metrics for general rankings are, say, impact factor. It's one. Another one can be, say, SGR, Saimeogo general rank. Also, other other SNP in another metric also exists. Lots of different metrics exist for general ranking. In this research work, we tried to provide multi-metric approach by assuming that by assuming that a single metric, say impact factor, may not be useful or may be biased. So in this article, we provide general ranking and categorization. Categorization means which subject category it belongs to. Or depending on the situation, categories can be, say, category Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. That is quartile, top quartile, top journal, second top journal, third top tier journal, etc. So this article, okay. So in this article, published article, though this article relates with, the domain relates with impact factor or general ranking or categorization, purely belongs to bibliometrics, scientometrics, so bibliometrics. But the methodology we used here, it was related with machine learning. And the same approach, I just talked to you that we, we used different general metrics as a feature and label was label of the data set was its label its 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 rank so if we prepared the data set as already mentioned with you we can get general ranking with some little bit of the, some other effort but we provide we how we achieve this we achieve this using supervised machine learning so though this work belongs to bibliometrics but the methodology we applied here, it was below, it belongs to machine learning. So, or AI, we can say that. The to today's topic is that how AI and informatics can get benefit, ben benefit with each other. Traditionally, say impact factor, don't actually, is not based on machine learning or AI. See, it's just, it's a ratio of some citations or it's a just mathematical formula, but our methodology involves machine learning for general ranking. It, it works very well, but we need some further extension to this work as well because, and we have also another related article and we got comments on that article from reviewer. Actually, it was rejected from the reviewer and we are prepared, preparing to submit another article. This article was actually accept, accepted. It's a related article. Actually, it's extended article is under still under construction after rejection actually so the more one rejection was why i'm telling you that so in this lab we need to know that what kind of work i am getting you may be um, depending on approval of professor park say you can st start or think your work in this direction as well or can provide your insight in in this topic as well Currently, we are also working further improving this thing. And we are in, trying to incorporate the one comment, important coming, comment was they want to see that just don't apply your metric on computer science journal. It's well known and they want us to apply some other categories as well. So it, our results were pretty pre preliminary. That is, we initially applied computer science subject areas and other sub areas related with computer science. They also want to expand our work with some say social scientist science or say management science related journals or the journals which don't provide high ranking, high citations. So they want to see that whether our procedure work on high, highly cited, uh, low cited uh, journals or research domains or not. Another work in 2019, it was the just scientometrics related investigating the applications of artificial intelligence in cybersecurity. We collected cybersecurity related uh, literature from Web of Science and uh, cybersecurity and AI related uh, data from Web of, Web of Science. Uh, say we use different 
for the actually in these type of research say when whenever we are trying to collect data we need to prepare a query search query if we are using web of science we need to prepare search query related with the methodology or with the working of web of science if we are collecting data from google scholar we need to know or we need to know about the how we should write search query related with google scholar if we are we are collecting data from dimensions we also need to know about the working of uh, say dimensions how to write query for that particular search engine say academic search engine it's it's important writing key search query it's very important to collecting the data because the one feature of the search query is precision and recall in information retrieval we want same type of data related with query and we don't not, don't want irrelevant results it's called precision and recall is that i want all related data but if we increase precision recall will drop if we increase recall that is we want all data precision will be dropped there will be a trade off between precision and recall but we want high precision and high recall for our research results precision recall means i want all the data and don't i, I don't want irrelevant data so irrelevance means precision i want precise similar to my query so query optimization or working on query is very important and as you are beginning in your research career and my advice for you for, for most of the beginners is that we need to focus on query building we need to learn how search engines a particular search engine we are using how that search engine works it's very much important because our query must have both kind of features that is precision and recall even though we need to trade off actually we need not to it will be already trade off so but we want high precision and recall in our query working on query is very much important please remember this because we want relevant data to our query and we want all relevant data so investigating the application of ai in cyber security so if i we what kind of query we can prepare ai and cyber security but what just ai ai deep learning we can add another synonym terms we can add say generative ai we can add some particular terms say deep learning itself an ai so if we are adding synonym terms actually we are increasing the we are increasing the recall that is we want that all articles also to collect that which also involve other queries as well so please note that our search query is very much important to optimize optimize mean high precision and high recall and we also need to know about our search engine another article a similar kind of say data in terms of data collection but uh, it the query was different actually global map mapping of uh, arti artificial intelligence in google and google scholar so the title name is global mapping of ai in google and google scholar so we, here the data actually was collected was a little bit different as compared to web of science because in web of science we just apply we need to learn just query in google and google scholar they don't provide data set download option so at that time in uh, in 2016 17 when i was collecting data set related with ai so artificial intelligence that is i applied query in google search engine and try to collect all the research results all the web pages which have artificial intelligence in their in their title title of the web page in the title of the web page so similarly same query also applied to the google scholar and the, all the search results which contain the artificial intelligence in the title here we need to learn how apply title search in google and google scholar it's 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 easy but the the difficult thing was that data was not downloadable in download downloadable form 
for that purpose i need to write or need to use some kind of say web scraper that can scrap the data from google and google scholar i wrote that scraper and also use another one as well and somehow collected the data but after that i also get noticed that google also changed policy at that time i have more freedom to collect the data though it was difficult to collect but i had the freedom to collect the data but after that i don't know because of me because of us but at at that time in in 2017 google changed its policy and now collection data collection is not straightforward or a, a little bit more diffi difficult or at least it's very uh, little bit uh, restricted so current research another current research so just these are the three articles i'm uh, say publish articles i talked about talk with you so currently what we are working here right now uh, related with informatics as i told i already told you that some other topics are also working, but I'm not mentioning those here. I'm also only working, mentioning here, which also relates with informatics, some type of informatics. I'm I say here we are working in academic citation classification, academic. The topic is academic citation classification. In I will come back to this slide later on. So, for example, what is academic citation classification? Just hold on. Okay. So academic citing, cite, citation classification using whatever the method is. Main point is we want to classify citations. Let's explain this. Input is text containing citation. The input of our, our software will be text containing citation. That is, it is a sentence that contains citation of some citation or citations the output is binary classification whether the citation is legal or not it is legitimate legitimate citation or bogus here citation classification belongs to informatics domain but our our some we are we got some results i'm not showing results here because these are the currently immature results we have but we have some kind of results here for if we are using generative ai for citation classification in the from the scratch in the start we can use say <coughs> generative ai for example chat gpt or bard and can ask its opinion but it's these these models are proprietary but we need to uh, so we, if we need larger data set and we want to use information in our research we need some either we need to pay that or we may need to use some open source models we are use both and open source model is also pro providing but open source models are not big enough as compared to chat gpt in future in future is my suggestion as well whenever whenever and my, my finding is is this that if we are proposing some say project or we're writing some proposal and working on some research article my suggestion is humble suggestion is we also think about that maybe some kind of generative model will work for us and even if if we are just focusing on outcome and we are not thinking about algorithm from computational perspective we can use chat chat gpt bard they don't charge much it's not it, it's not they don't just charge, charge much but we we can also build model ourselves we can purchase a limited version of say chat gpt or bard for our particular purpose we can also use open source without pay payment and if required where the payment will comes actually if required we may need to fine tune our the generative model that that is the model already is trained for example chat gpt chat gpt you don't work on pakistani law chat gpt will not work on say korean law we need to also 
provide that book of Korean law to chat GBT and also need to ask that chat GBT that also read this book and remember this book. That is called transfer learning and in chat GBT terminology, it is called fine tuning. So my suggestion is that when if you we are trying or we are making some proposals, also consider use of generative AI, say chat GBT, BARD or some other open source models. In this particular research work, in this particular research work, if we say that input is text containing citation, output is binary classification, the data set we didn't prepare, actually there is a well-known data set. And four types of classification this data set had. Say this, they classified manually, if we if you re recall that I told that our data set for supervised machine learning, our data set will have labels. In this case, they have four labels. For example, a citation can be said it is related work. That is a, a citation work is related. A cited paper is related to citing paper. Okay, number one. Another label can be a cite citing paper is comparing its work with the some cited paper. It's using some other method, methodology or some other work. It is called using work, extending work. May, I, am, I may be writing a paper and I am extending the work of another person. Another person will be, paper of another person will be my citation. So four kinds of citation original data set had. But these citations were categorized into two related and comparison work were said incidental related and companion were said incidental that is the asked zero label assigned zero label using work and extending work were treated as important citations and assigned one label so in the data set we have two type of label zero that is it is bogus citation or incidental and one it is important citation it was the imbalanced data set imbalanced data set means important citations were less in number 67 and irrelevant citations were 389. I also invite you that if you have some experience in this sense that after seeing this paper or after working on this topic, when I thought about my article citations, that for example, if my article has 30 citations, say 40 citations, when I figured out and tried to think that um, how many genuine citations I my article got and surprisingly, surprisingly it, the number was very less. So if, if why it is important citation classification? Okay, in in its in its say computational perspective, if I am proposing a new model, say new machine learning algorithm for citation classification. So it's one approach, but for Scientometrics or bibliometric researcher, why citation analysis or citation classification is important. If we know that, we know that we using CiteSpace, was Viewer, we perform different kinds of collaboration network or citation network. So if we have different kinds of collaboration networks and citation networks, and say say citation network, and if our citation are bogus, our network is actually garbage and all the results based on that network are also not trustworthy so it is it is recommended that but it is also a debatable thing that whether to filter out citations or not but in, in what we observe that if we are make, making some net kind of network for example collaboration network say author network say institution network so if co-authorship network, if the co-authors say, okay, I'm changing the, say, change the example. Actually, if we have a say, say citation network, I end the citation network, we don't filter out the bogus citations. Our network will be, the results will be not trustworthy. So in this start, we can make two type kind of networks with all the citations 
and with with the filtered citations and we will see the difference so if we are investigating see knowledge, knowledge flow and if we filter out the bogus citations hopefully we will get better knowledge uh, understanding and better, better results so in the research work we are trying to work on knowledge flow analysis using citation and collaboration networks we are trying to uh, say say collaboration network analysis different types of collaboration network and citation network analysis on particular queries for example the query can be generative ai or it, it's synonym terms i will show you uh, how we collected the data from dimensions shortly the ch main challenge in this topic this is the second topic actually in the previous slide i talked talk with the citation classification now i am talking about knowledge flow analysis those topics are connected though i am because i am also proposing that we may we may provide we may provide filtering the citations. So the challenge, what we are seeing, facing here in this research, that citation network data set is not readily available. Well, that is, Google Scholar don't provide Web of Science, I don't think so, it provides dimensions, don't provide so what to do now? So if we don't have citation related information or data set readily available, we can download data set from some other article, some say if they provide us, but we are not able to collect data set of, of our own without any effort. For this, what we are going to, we are trying it. So we, analyze the collaborative network say on our query but for citation network we are trying to write a python code say web scrapper that collect citation related information for example from google scholar we collect, collect citation information and then that citation information we can collect that metadata from web of science or some other free resource as well so, but it's 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 a challenge here the, the, in citation network analysis we are facing this challenge here. So already I, I, I talked about this topic that we are uh, trying to uh, work on general categorization. We have already published an article. We are also uh, trying to improve this article. Uh, there, is, there is a related article. We are also trying to write it by ex expanding its scope from computer science journal to some other uh, fields. So another research topic we are working here, it's in, very interesting and actually the idea was provided by Professor Park. Investigating and mitigating biases in research information retrieval system. The title is Investigating and Mitigating Biases in Research Information Retrieval System. Research Information Retrieval System in Google Scholar and Dimension, for example. Again, in this research, the issue will be data collection from Google Scholar. Dimension provide categorized data set, but Google Scholar don't provide the data set in this current, in this form. So we are facing this challenge here. The data challenge is data collection for Google Scholar. So the topic is actually, if we think about biases in various research information retrieval system, the biases are actually different. We are considering, say, demographic or country bias. For example, if I am from Pakistan and it's, it's not an English speaking country and it's not a developed country as compared to, say, America, Korea. So, whether my research article is being retrieved from that particular search engine, say, Google Scholar or Dimension. Similarly, if, if uh, my article is submitted from Korea, whether an article from Korea is have the same kind of uh, uh, retrieval weightage as compared to if the article is from America, Canada, England, New Zealand, Australia, we are investigating this kind of uh, biasness, whether it belongs to these search engines or not. So, so uh, here again, I'm, I'm, I, we, we are facing that data collection from Google Scholar. And again, an, another type of, uh, say, web scraper is, is going to write. We are going to write here. We are actually, we tried and 
a little bit and it's it's working if i want to discuss with the search capability of dimensions and google scholar with you it's very dimension is very good provide the interface of dimension is good but i feel sometimes i feel that sometimes i feel that the dimensions also have maybe some limitation in their search power search capability as we know that google search capability is beyond all others so in another article actually i want to investigate that article i wrote here don't start it yet this art this top but i want to analyze analysis i want to analyze in future actually analysis of search capability of various academic search engines just search capability so whether they provide a, this is difficult topic actually in previous slide i told i talked about biasness in search i'm here i'm talking about whether is my the search query option that whether the search query is providing precise results whether it providing recall as so i want to compare precision and recall between dimensions google scholar semantic scholar etc another search article i'm going to start from with my phd student is that it's related with automatic literature review this also belongs to informatics actually for the and what i want to automate i want to automate if i have collection of articles if i have collection of articles say i have 50 articles and i want to write literature review automatically and in the review what i want from each article the software will provide the gap addressed by the article limitations written in the article what kind of data set used what models used how the models provided the results what evaluation metrics were used it's like that input is collection of articles the output is table form literature so we are maturing this uh, topic and a phd student want to take this topic and but we are just starting or actually we we are thinking and we're working on it it's 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 in preliminary stage i skipped this slide i will provide you this information to you you can read this slide maybe actually we are getting uh, maybe time maybe short at least 10 minutes remaining so i want to actually discuss with you dimension interface here, next with say i want to switch my screen hold on okay oma so i assume that you are done with uh, your presentation professor Are you just i want to professor the presentation is done almost and if you if you want me to discuss dimensions interface with the students next is that okay first of all you know we would like to thank you for your the you know very you know informative lecture and as well as the research presentation and then you know we can get us some questions or what discussions comment from yeah. the you know audience yeah if they have some yeah yes please please feel free, feel free to ask any questions any comments i'm open, open to ask okay hey, um i have a have a question um it's not particularly about your lecture today i am also doing topic modeling but i'm not you know a computer science person so i'm using r to um analyze my data and i have a large set of twitter data set um yeah. and uh i'm using the lda uh yeah. method but um the 
the data is very uh, noisy and I have some issues with um, pre-data processing um, to get a meaningful result. Uh, do you have any suggestions with um, you know the, the pre-data process, uh, processing? Yeah. yeah, actually, as we know that uh, LDA latent digital allocation is a topic modeling algorithm. It's a most popular algorithm used and also the screen is also showing the results using LDA. In if you are using Twitter data, are you using Twitter data? Yes, I'm using Twitter data. data yeah. Uh, actually, that is the short text data, and say I, I, we know that Twitter messages are short. So if you are using short text data, and if we apply pre-processing because they also use and 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 we need to be, be very much careful about pre-processing. One thing is it's short. So LDA usually work on rel relatively larger data set. And that is the each document is large. So we need to choose some other topic modeling in, in addition to LDA as well. Because another suggestion, if we are going to use LDA, the suggestion is if number one, the pre-processing will affect much. Uh, sometime, some years back, I thought that preprocessing may not be affecting very much, but in this particular case, for example, social media case, if we are we want to say capture say sentiments, feelings. So if in traditional preprocessing step, we filter out, we usually filter out say numbers, say emotions, smileys, and say URLs, but in this case, social media related data processing will be different as compared to if we have some book reviews, some movie reviews, to pre -pre here pre-processing will be different. And if we remove, say, for example, smiley, if we have a smiley, smiley sometime, so say it is angry, angry, so we, we need to use that particular word in, in place of that smiley. smiley. Mm -hmm. So number one, so pre-processing, don't filter, filter out the all the emoticons and smileys from the data set. Important thing is that identify a related article where they also use the pre-processing. They already have findings. And the my, my observation is that don't remove any kind of smileys and also actually apply it, need to apply this. But but again, still we have we have short data, short text, short, short in each document is very short. For us, what document is actually it's a message. So depending on this your scenario, if a user has five, you can combine you can combine multiple tweets together just to increase the size of the article, but it depends on the use case. So if, if the use case is different, you just may not combine. But if if use case is, say, if I am trying to filter out, say whether this, this tweet is written by a male person, a, a male or a female person, so I can, I can combine the tweet, say 100 tweets, say 10 tweets from a person, just to get, and also need to careful, carefully see the time span as well. So, because time span also change the mood of a person. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm angry, my, my tweets are different. So I need to, if I want to merge to in, just in, to in, just to increase the size of the data set or size of a particular deed, I need to also take care of the time frame as well. Just to, just to see, have same sentiments and have same situation. Okay, thank you. Um, so just another quick question. So, um, then is is do you suggest any other method other than LDA if I'm using such a large Twitter data set, or the LDA yeah. is what? Actually, best LDA is the most uh, widely used, and uh, one suggestion is, but depending on the your research question, if if merging is sensible, logical, you can merge. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you one can apply. Uh, SVD singular singular value decomposition and say PL as LD, uh, LDA so and some other maybe some new model maybe some 
that is given you to say see, see the literature use maybe some person proposed some new model for mm. short text message we need to search from the literature review that is we need to search that short text topic modeling so okay. <laughs> svd can be apl applicable but it is not popular as compared to that and because it also provides so topic modeling LD, lda provides soft clustering but svd provide hard hard clustering clustering actually mm -hmm. if you are getting my point that soft mm -hmm. clustering mean cluster overlaps for example we say that uh, this uh, this topic belongs to uh, say this this theme belongs to this topic as well as other topic as well but in hard clustering one theme belongs to just one topic so depending on the scenario, we also choose that whether we are going soft clustering or uh, say hard clustering. So topic modeling provides soft clustering, overlapped topics. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Thank you. Yeah, that helps a lot. So if, if you if you send me the particular research question, I will. Uh, I hope I will provide some better uh, answer to your query. I'll show, I'll definitely do that. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, yeah. Any other question from any person? Let me give you your, my uh, thought about your presentation uh, related to the, our collaboration. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you know, citation network data is in, in, in really difficult to get. But I think okay. I have mentioned that uh, using the both of your software, we can, you know, correct the citation network from the web of science and dimensions and permit. Because if we, you know, download the reference part of the, you know, papers collected through the web of science and dimensions, you know, and then we input the, you know, data to the first view, and then there is option, you know, uh, to take the citation network. I think I have shared this, you know, information with you. I will send you the, you know, my recent paper, you know, conference paper, and then or I can walk through you about the, you know, the citation network. Okay. Okay, professor. Yeah, please provide that. My observation is that that uh, through that we will have co-cited reference network. We may not get citation network. Cited, one thing is co-cited reference references, and other thing is citation network. Yeah, yeah, I also observe that. that. Yeah, the, I understand that the, you mean the you know intercitation is different from the yeah. co-citation, right? Yeah. You know, both yeah. of you have options for the intercitation as well. You know, besides the co-citation. Yes, okay. professor. Uh, the boss weaver can make the network, but. Yeah. The data set is not downloadable, but I, I also observe that we also observe that dimensions, it's real time interface also providing citation network. If we, it, it is providing the, if we apply query dimension mm -hmm. itself, make the citation network, but it is not providing the data related with the citations, but you are saying that we need to merge web of science data and dimension data. Then we will be able to, as, as you are suggesting that. I will try. I will see. Yes, that. I think we have to have the separate meeting for this, you know, issue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Let us make a time. Okay. Okay. And then yeah. another thing that uh, you know, I know the you know you are working with the you know the classification of citation focus or legitimate citation. You know, I propose. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for working on that. But it has to be differentiated from the semantics colors algorithm. I shared the article, you know, Semesis yeah. Colors, you know, has adopted, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So yes, Semantics Color provide us with the, you know, several categories of citation typology from the important to the, you know, background citation, right? Yeah. Okay. And then I think we need to have a discussion, you know, for the uh, another time. And yeah. I I uh, took a note of uh, okay that's pretty much all from my from me and then anything else from the audience? Oh, 
Oh, thank you for your presentation. And, and I personally, uh, I'm going to uh, do research uh, using deep learning someday. So personally, I would like to ask about the application of GNN in social science, because I think my, in my opinion, uh, our research is focused on the comprehension of social network. So I believe that the graph based network will work as, as well as image or text based neural network. So do you have any suggestions for my future research? Yeah, so the choice is good. Uh, you choose the graph neural networks, GNNs, it's good. And uh, so have you studied something about GNN or, or not right now? Oh, I tried with uh, simple data sets. Yeah, actually, when, if you want to study some material, I can re refer to you that, uh, have, do you use Coursera for but, online courses? Uh, Coursera, uh, I've yeah. but I, I haven't used that. Okay. It's, there is a very good related specialization and another links related with GNN. I will provide in the group and in the email actually. So if we, if you start reading from there, it uh, online say free and it's free course you related with different types of deep neural networks, specifically GANs and GNNs. So it will be good for, for your, for, for the learning. So I will provide you, you the exact link from the course here. Uh, thank you. I appreciate. Most welcome. And we can and we can also discuss sometime whatever you are getting some issue, some theoretical concepts, and if you are getting some uh, uh, hurdles, we will uh, can discuss as well. Most uh, welcome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other person? Okay, we have the one minute or so. Anybody else? What about Cam? You don't have anything, you know, to give a feedback? Um, I I found the lecture very uh helpful because I am actually doing um several papers um right now. I I do have a I was I wanted to ask for your suggestion me because I will soon be doing a topic about listening and in uh, fo focused on listening and engagement uh, regarding um, AI powered tools like how can AI tools be effective to listen and understand diverse audience in the context of advertising do you suggest any platform that I could use to extract data because I understand like for publications, you could extract from dimensions, you could like, extract from um, web of science, but specifically for social media platforms, because like Twitter has API um, and but then for other platforms where I can like look into advertising content, would you have any suggestions on platforms for that? So you want to collect advertisement related contents? Yes, because I wanted to um analyze like what are the sentiments of people in terms of how their behaviors are um in relation to ai powered contents okay so in this particular topic if we th think about that what are the venues from we get advertisements for example if we see some company advertise some job postings, adver advertisements. So if we think one thing is that we search from say Google Scholar and that's something that, that is totally different. It's your venue is say if, if advertisement is from Facebook, advertisement is through Twitter. In that case, as you already say that we need some payments. So, here is the, we have some limitations in, in this particular scenario, limitation in terms of data collection, actually. So if 
we are not ready to say for using APIs as say Twitter or say Facebook, where we need to search some particular say websites for say, say LinkedIn or some other say they may have provide some pages for advertisements as well. That is, it's, I'm not pin, pinpointing a particular websites. I need to search for that because uh, it's I exactly I don't know that which websites are way or links will provide advertisement related information for for particular say data analysis. So, but the, my my suggestion is that we need to search some other venues, say LinkedIn so, or others, where some persons or some companies ad, say put some advertisements. It can be it can be say online social websites say uh, online shopping websites actually say alibaba and some other say they say advertise advertise their say say their product so, so or so, if we define the ad advertisement concretely we can so ad actually advertisement can be subjective a definition of a advertisement can be subjective actual if we define the the advertisement based on that definition we can pinpoint that is from the say venues. So if we define that advertisement is say of advertisement is of online material, say online shopping related. So if that is the case, then we have lots of uh, say websites. And I hope, and but I'm using the word I hope they will allow us to collect the data and relevant comments. So in, in as we know that you Koreans are very good in purchasing say online uh, shopping are very uh, the world is now actually adopting some, uh, online shopping Koreans already used to of online shopping and you have special um, say search engines as well say neighbor maybe never provide some some advertisement related links so need to search that even even maybe some public posts of some company or some well known say samsung is very popular so, so if samsung is announced some advertisement it's on say say it's say channels or some other website you will have lots of comments of, of related with these on, on the products of some samsung so better to choose some well known company which which is liked by persons say if you if we choose if we choose data collection from korean so korean likes samsung so if maybe Samsung related advertisements posted by on Samsung web related websites and other venues, maybe, maybe the data will have some reviews or comments on that. Thank you, Professor. So um, it's really more on APIs and like direct um, communication with the platforms and companies. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.